Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Matrix, a setup that you can use for live stream. A while back I did make a video about the routing and how to make this work really quick and that setup was just copying your, your main bus right onto your Matrix and then sending it out to your live stream. And that was a great option when we didn't have anybody in the actual room experiencing uh, the music live, but we were just sending out to live stream one well, now. A lot of us have people back in the room. Maybe you don't want to go the aux, uh, the aux bus route and you just want to use a matrix. So we're going to dive into that and all of its intricacies and how I have laid mine out uh, to do that. I Disclaimer, I did this uh, a couple weeks ago and I, I ran it in my live stream. I found out something that's very critical that can't work in my environment about 10 minutes before the service. And I, so I had to make some changes with all of our audio. We'll talk about that at the end, but let's jump into the console now and see what it looks like and how I've got mine set up and how maybe you might approach yours. Here we go. Okay, so let's start off talking about the matrix scene that I built. Now, there are two different ways to do this. One is the way that I did, which starts with my main mix being sent into my matrix and then I use a separate bus to add on to that. The other one is just to build buses and send your buses straight into your matrix. Because remember, a matrix is a mix of buses, whether you're using buses in here on the console or your main fader, which is actually considered your main bus. So a lot of people don't think about the main as a bus, but in fact, it is a bus, it's a stereo bus that's built into the console and it's taking all of your stuff to one location, which happens to be your main speakers or your PA in your room. So let's dive into the one that I did and then we'll talk about how, how and why I'm not using it anymore. So to start out with, with the matrix, uh, I did come to my, uh, I, I did come down to my matrix layer here. I created matrix one and two as a stereo pair. You can see I labeled them red. That's kind of my thing. It always tells my, my other mix engineers to stay away from it. Don't touch it. Don't change it. Uh, but before we hit sends on fader, what we have to do is start out with our main mix. So we come up here and we select our main output. We can either page over to the sends tab or just hit the view button here on sends. And then we can use the first encoder knob up here and you'll see the little indicator move up and down as you do this and there's a level down here and the easiest thing to do is start with it at zero and go from there so you're sending a full copy of your main mix into your matrix now what you do want to do make sure that this is pre fader the send needs to be pre-fader. How do you do that? We're going to page down here. And this gives us for matrix 1 and 2, matrix 3 and 4, matrix 5 and 6. Here we can change between pre, post, and all the various different settings. I just have it set at pre-fader. What that means is that I can turn my main fader up or down for my room experience but it will not change what's going into my live stream. My live stream won't get louder or softer. We want the live stream to be controlled and consistent while we control our house here. Okay, so now that we've got our house mix going into our live stream, the next thing we wanna do is build a stereo bus that we can use to augment or enhance the sound. Typically what we're gonna get is that the vocals are going to be loud and the band is not going to be loud enough. Why is that? Because you have natural sound coming off of guitar amplifiers or drum sets, same things we've talked about in other videos. So we need to turn those instruments actually up in our live stream and maybe turn our vocals down. So let's do that next. So for me, I come over to bus nine through 16 and here you can see I have another red pair. This is bus 11 and 12 and that is stream left and stream right. So these are a stereo pair, they're linked. And what we can do now is just like any other bus, we can hit sends on fader and we can start to add instruments over here into this bus so that they can be moved into our matrix and then add to our sound. So you can start building this, but we're not going to be able to, to know how much to add unless we're actually listening to our 
live stream mix. So we can guess over here, but we're going to come back to this setup in just a second. I'm going to hit sends on fader. Now I'm going to go down to matrix. Matrix, first thing I'm going to do is hit solo. And this will allow us to plug in some headphones into the side of the console and, and go ahead and, and hear what mix we're building. The next thing we're going to do is now that we select this and we hit sends on fader, notice nothing changed. That's because we're on the matrix layer and it's selected. And when you hit sends on fader, you can't put inputs into a matrix. So we have to hit this bus on the far left over here, get to the bus layer. And now we can build a mix out of buses to go into our matrix. All we've done is brought our, our live stream bus up to zero. So now we're getting full volume of whatever we send into this bus is going to go into this matrix and add on to our house mix. So now that we've done that, we can come back up here. We will hit sends on fader. We'll go back to bus nine through 16. We'll select our bus 11, hit sends on fader. And now we'll go to our instruments and so we've got a couple things going on at this point. We have our headphones on. We're soloing our matrix for our live stream. We have this uh, bus 11 and 12 already going into our matrix. And now as we add instruments in, uh, we can go ahead and listen to that change that's being made in our headphones. Okay, so at this point, I've, I've gone ahead and you can see I've added in, this is floor tom. Uh, we've got some rides, some cymbals, because cymbals are usually really loud in the room and not turned up a whole lot in my mains. So I'm adding a certain amount of cymbal coming in, bass guitar, electric guitar, uh, guitars run through a small amp on stage, but we needed to turn that up to get it nice and full in our house, uh, in our stream mix. Uh, even over here, the pastor's mic is, is turned up as well. You might think that seems a little odd. Why do you have to turn the pastor up if he's you know, full volume and sounds good in the room. But in our live stream, we need to keep our average level way up. So uh, if we pause and talk about DB level right now, my house mix for band time, for music, anything music, my house mix is about 95 to 96 DB. And my pastor speaking is 74 uh, on average DB, 74 to 75. So that's a 20 DB swing from top down to bottom but if we do a 20 dB swing on our live stream, nobody is going to hear the message. <laughs> They're going to hear all the music and no message. So I do have to raise up my pastor's mic uh, because he's effectively quieter in the room. And so I need to bring him up in our live stream to keep that listening experience really good. Also, if I flip over to my second page, I do have some pads and some keyboards added in. And whenever I get to it and have the luxury of actually adding crowd mics, I will add my crowd mics in there as well. Uh, effects, you can see also I've added some effects. So uh, with this setup, I was inspired by the guys at MixU and I completely changed my effects setup and uh, I'll go over that in a different video. But for this, I did have to add in some vocal reverb, some drum reverb, and this was band reverb that I added in just to make that, that live stream experience a bit more lush. I don't need a whole lot of that in my room because the room already has reverb. And so this gave me an opportunity to accent that or accentuate that going into the live stream. One thing I want to point out here is that this is my PC input channel right here. Uh, you can see that it is muted and it's not going into this, uh, this extra bus. Uh, and my challenge, the reason that I'm not actually able to use this entire setup is because this PC input goes into my house. I'll talk about this at the end and some of my shortcomings of thoughts that I didn't figure out <laughs> the solution for until 10 minutes before service, uh, which was kind of hectic. But um, we want to be very thoughtful about which setup we use. And, uh, and this is the big reason as to why I'm not going to use this matrix scene going forward. So hopefully that helps you out if you're looking to run a matrix for your live stream. Uh, again, I am not running a matrix anymore. I am back on my, uh, my aux bus mix. And here's why. Uh, if you track with me, my setup has ProPresenter, 
going across NDI into our live streaming computer, which runs OBS. So audio and video go across that. Well, the audio of those videos also is seen in the house. The video goes to a projector, but the audio comes into my console and goes to my main speakers. Well, we're getting that copy coming to my live stream. So what I had to do that day was turn off the NDI audio so that it only came through the soundboard. Now here's the other catch. My audio and my video for my cameras, the audio is delayed 300 milliseconds. So now what we would have had was a video playing and the audio coming by 300 milliseconds later, which would have been really distracting and really obnoxious. So I had to go turn that 300 millisecond delay off, which meant that that service, my cameras and audio were not quite in alignment the way I would normally have them. So you need to think about all of these things in advance. So the way I do it now is back with my aux bus setup where that video audio coming from ProPresenter does not go through my stream. It all goes across NDI. All right, well, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you found value in this video and share it with your friends because there's bound to be some other people that are looking for this information and you can be the one to help them out. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, leave them in the description below. I'm always in the comments section of my videos. I love to help you guys out there all the time. All right, well, that's it for this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.